Don't worry, Jerry. I can go. Uh, I can. I can. I'll get us some time. Very focused on the. Uh, oh, actually, focused on the bagels. Those bagels are good, Jerry. Actually, we can't get those bagels. That kind of that, that quality of bagels in Blacksburg. back for another hour, uh, or maybe a little bit less than an hour. Uh, the plan is to walk you through, well, as Jerry alluded to, we've been working on this project since 2009, and it, we're trying to land it uh, now safely, meaning that we can, um, uh, we've done most of the research, and we want to pass it off to you, uh, pass off what we found. The uh, structure of the presentation will be, for the, again, for the first half an hour, I'll, I'll be just giving you some, some background information about how uh, our procedure for designing roll-up doors. And then uh, for the second half an hour, we'll actually try to design a door uh, and the jams. Um, I've already had uh, a recommendation or a suggestion to design. So I, I gave this presentation or a form of it um, in Cleveland in July. And we did a, a C-section uh, cold form steel jam. Um, but uh, I had a suggestion today to do uh, a, a big door, a 30 foot wide roll up door uh, with really big catenary forces on the jams. And so it's up to you what you wanna know, what you wanna uh, learn. So I don't know if we, ha if we take a vote, if I, I don't know how many of you were at the MGMA presentation in, in Cleveland. Uh, if, you, in, if you wanna hear that again, or if you want to, go towards an, uh, designing an HSS uh, or a more rigid jam detail. So is there a certain vote? Like you wanna go with big, big doors, small doors? Uh, do you wanna deal with warping torsion or just St. Venon torsion? Do you want a torsion lesson? Are you feeling like you want torsion today? Uh, it's Friday, I don't know if you want torsion. We do C-section? All right, I mean the C-section is, is probably more, more challenging. And maybe we just tried, I can just, we can still <laughs> do the 30 foot door and show that the jam, that that type of jam will not work. How about that? Um, that's uh, the strategy. So then um, I would recommend you download this uh, spreadsheet. So this is our C-section jam spreadsheet, as it said here, as it says here. Also, um, we wrote some software to uh, analyze uh, roll up doors for wind um, to calculate the deflections, to calculate the catenary forces. So you can download that here. Um, it's a pretty big file because an, uh, we are not uh, professional programmers and so we s take our academic software and stuff it into this kind of clunky executable. And But anyway, um, it's here if you want to try to get these two files now. Try not to bring down the internet in here because I need it to run my software. give you a, a little bit of time this morning. So the, uh, so the 
what we've been doing is trying to rationalize a new procedure for, for the AF world. And, uh, the motivation for this is um, there were several hurricanes uh, in the past that have caused significant damage to metal buildings. Um, and probably some of you were involved or with the post-hurricane surveys <coughs> through COE or MDMA. The, the, the bottom line was that the, the doors were not performing that well. Uh, these doors with wind locks. The wind locks uh, frame into the door jam and, and in service, the, the door can roll up and, and roll down just fine. And then in a hurricane, when, when the pressure is pushing on the door, you get um, the wind locks engaged and make sure that the door can't roll up because of friction and also make sure that the forces due to wind are transferred um, to the jam and to the, to the, uh, the rest of the, the, w the end wall frame or wherever the door is. So it can get out to um, get out to the ground. So, so this is uh, kind of the anatomy of a of a uh, door. So we're looking at a cross section of a plan, and the pressure is pushing on the door, and we have uh, some sort of either maybe we have a very uh, rigid wall that we're connecting uh, uh, a, the wind lock to, or maybe we have a cold form steel section, or an HSS section, or a hot rolled section. The basic idea is that we have this little piece called a wind bar that is fastened to the, to the wall. And then you have this wind lock that's riveted to the roll up door to the, to the curtain. And um, when this deflects, there's, there's a little gap here between the wind lock and the wind bar. In service, the door is perfectly uh, flat. And so the door can roll up. And then when the door deflects like this, the distance from this point to this point shortens, and these wind locks grab, and then uh, you have some resistance to the wind in, in a hurricane. And the, when, DASMAS, or when, when MDMA and, and DASMA, which is the door manufacturing rep, um, organization, um, when they uh, came, came uh, talking to myself and Professor Murray back in 2009, they were thinking about how can we improve or implement access door analysis and design into a typical workflow. So, workflow. So you have the building owner, you have the metal building designer, you have the door manufacturer, um, and there's some challenges as you as you all are aware in the communication between these three. Um, uh, and and so this was our goal. Um, so we went. There was also a suggestion that maybe the the predicted wind lock forces that are on the jam were not consistent with what. Um, was actually happening, and, and overall there was a push to, to understand the door behavior because, as you, as you know, if you lose the door, then you can build a lot of pressure inside the building during a hurricane and the walls and the roof can blow off, and then you lose really everything inside the building and the belt building. And so these, these, uh, we, didn't want, we don't want these doors to be the weak point. So uh, we went to DBCI in Douglasville, Georgia, uh, twice actually. This was the first program in 2009. They had the vacuum uh, chamber where we could build uh, uh, an end wall and, and, and assemble our door. This is the, uh, the Motley Crew, the original the door boys. Some of us are more sweaty than others. That's, that's Bray from uh, DBCI. Um, but uh, overall, it was a, a really rewarding experience because we, we learned how, how a roll-up door behaves. And you'll, you'll see these wind locks right above Professor Murray's head. Um, well, these wind locks are, are uh, strain gauge, so we actually measured the forces in the wind locks. We applied a pressure to the door and measured the, 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 the strains, which we converted into forces in the wind locks. So we knew uh, exactly for any pressure that we were applying what, what forces were in the wind locks. And it was pretty valuable for validating our method. Um, what we found, so, so this is a, uh, a plot of pressure versus dis door displacement. This is out of plane door displacement. So we, we measured points here, here, and here along the door at the center of the door. And what you can see here is as the pressure increases, so we increase the pressure to, to 10 PSF, um, there's a, a, a one stiffness, just a really pretty low stiffness. This is before the wind locks engage. Then uh, and, and if, you, if, you were, if you were at the test, you would see we would apply the pressure, and the door would go like, whoo, like that. It would just open up right away. Uh, to that 10 PSF, and it would deflect to about six inches right away. Uh, 
uh, then the Winlocks get engaged, and then that's when we were really pushing um, the door, getting up to 50, 60, 70 PS. Uh, um, so this was a bi there was a bilinear trend in the, in the stiffness, um, you know, because of the Winlocks and, and the engagement of the Winlocks. So uh, something else that we measured was, uh, as I mentioned, were the Winlock forces. So this is a plot of the Winlock force versus the distance from the bottom of the door to the top of the door. I don't know why it goes, feels like it should go 0 to 10, but it goes up to 0, but whatever. Um, so this is the bottom of the door, this is the top of the door. And so you, you can see that the windlock forces are variable. Um, they are, uh, for the door that we applied at a pressure of 80 PSF, we were seeing about 600, 500, 600 pounds per windlock. Uh, but what was interesting was that the DASMA procedure, the, the calculation-based procedure was predicting twice that. Um, so uh, we were, we were, and also uh, the DASMA procedure was predicting um, six inches of displacement, uh, whereas we were getting 12 inches of displacement. So both were about, uh, were off, and off by quite a bit. One in one direction, one in the other direction. Uh, so we, ha we saw that we had some improvements to, to make. Um, and the, the reason why uh, the forces were lower and the displacement Reflections were higher was because of uh, the Jan flexibility, and this may be something that you guessed, or maybe that if you've heard me present before, that that, that makes sense to you. The, if when we had a C-section Jan, we had C-sections framing in with the, the welded bear plate, um, but uh, the, the the wind bar is connected here. The, the force is pulling with this, and so you get this bending of the web. You get bending of the flange. You get you also can get some global effects like. This whole thing can twist. This whole thing can bend, and just these small little deformations uh, significantly affect the the behavior of the door. So I mean, you saw that wind lock, um, uh, just a five eighths of an inch or a half an inch of wind lock spacing closing in in the plane of the door corresponds to six inches of out of plane displacement. So it's. Uh, so you can imagine if you have a flexible jam, that you're going to get more displacement of your door just because of the, the fact that it's uh, flexible. So uh, how do we how do we take that into account? And so that's that's the, the goal of, of, of uh, me talking today. So I always show I'm going to show a video next just to break it up a little bit, um, just to show you how a door actually behaves um, at very high loads. And some of you have maybe seen this before. I'll tell you right now that I was not there that day, and I probably would not have. Um, th this is Jerry insisted on on uh, blowing up the door, so we blew up the door. Uh, although, like my grad student almost died, um, as you'll see here. So, well, luckily, uh, I'll tell you right now that that uh, Dr. Tian Gao is still alive, and he's uh, has his own company now in uh, California. Um, but this is uh, what happens when you load a door. This is the second test testing run that we did in 2011. This is what happens. This is about 200 psf. So the door is designed for about 80, but it's going to 200. This is Tien, number six of the uh, door team, and uh, that's that's what happens when the when the door actually uh, when you have your wind locks detailed properly. That's what happens. You get to 200 psf. And of course, we have slow motion. that case what how the door failed was the, the jam was was uh, I think I think that was the Jerry jam so we had a <laughs> the old Jerry jam the Jerry jam was very strong and uh, had problems with jam failure and, and what happened was the the wind lock where they were riveted uh, just just uh, pulled out of the of the door and that's that's how it failed um, all right, so anyway, we started thinking about how can we come up with a design procedure um, to treat this uh, door behavior. And there was already, as I mentioned, the DASMA procedure that kind of did this already, where we saw that we were seeing essentially one, uh, mostly one-way action. We'll get to the top of the door, things get a little bit slower, but 
overall, we saw that we could get one-way action here. So we could treat this as a, as a beam. Um, so the beam uh, would actually have springs, though. So it would have springs at the end. And, uh, and so we, if we could write down the equations for that beam with a spring, then we could predict the, uh, the behavior of the door both before the windlocks engage and after the windlocks engage. So we wrote down some, I didn't even put them up here, uh, that we wrote down some differential equations. We solved the system of differential equation with this software. Uh, and what we get is um, the ability to, to reproduce that curve that I showed you um, with, s with some calculation. So we can, we can put in the windlock gap, we can put in the dimensions of the door, we can put in the jam stiffness, we can put in even the profile of the door, so the stiffness of the profile of the door, and we can, we can get the load deformation response of the door uh, for a, door, a roll up door with windlocks. And with that, not only can we get the load deformation response, but we can get the catenary forces, the forces on the jam um, at any pressure that we're interested in. So this seems to be a, this is a valuable tool, I think, for, for, uh, for you all who are trying to figure out, you know, what forces should I design my jams to. Um, and uh, this, this is the final form, as I told you, it's super clunky. Like what we're hoping is that you all take this approach, we can give you the code, we can give you whatever you want, and you all try to like in, in integrate it into your own software, your own method. Actually, that's, what's, uh, that's what Jerry has done. Um, let me, uh, so I'll just show you what, if it's coming up to you yet or not, but based on the methods that we've developed, um, it, I'll just, this is ready for prime time whether or not Jerry, but I'll just show like, so Jerry has developed the design procedure um, based on what we've done uh, and using that, that tool that I just showed you to kind of condense it down for you all for DBC, uh, for uh, DBC and Java. Sorry. Just to uh, show you that this is actually being used. All right. Um, so, the, the, so we can calculate low deformation response, jam, stiffness, all that stuff for any, for any roll-up door. Yes. Not very sensitive. You mean the bending stiffness? Yeah, the bending, it's not very sensitive at all. Um, but if you, if you uh, download this tool, you can play with it and see yourself. But, um, but what it is sensitive to is the jam stiffness. And, and that's the, the hardest part, I think, for, for uh, you all is to, is to make sure that you're at least like in the ballpark for calculating the jam stiffness. Um, in this case, in the details that we had, we had girts framing in at, at different uh, locations. Um, these girts, depending upon how long they are, they provide a certain amount of torsional stiffness to the jam. Um, they, uh, depending upon the details of the connection, you may have more flexibility or less flexibility at the jam, depending upon the cross section. So we spent a lot of time thinking about that. Um, and there's uh, some publications available for if you really want to get into the details for calculating it. The idea was that, at least for this C-section jam, that, that the jam stiffness, which we characterize as uh, the movement of the wind bar, um, so if we, if we poke on the wind bar, how, how much stiffness do we get? That stiffness is a contribution of a bunch of stuff, like torsion of the section, web bending, um, as shown here. And so uh, if you, you've probably seen this before in other uh, engineering applications where you have Springs in series, as, uh, and this is the equation for for that. Um, so we have a, a, a bending spring and a torsional spring, and you combine those, and that's how you get the, the jam stiffness. And what, what we've provided is some methods for calculating these two quantities. So we can provide those for you for, or now we have those for um, uh, C-section jam, and we can also teach you, uh, we, well, we have methods and a spreadsheet for you to, for uh, HSS sections, or a, and we could also even show you for a hot roll uh, W section. Whatever, whatever, you, whatever kind of section you want, we can, we can help you get to these. Right now we have C section and, and uh, closed section. So this is what I was saying for, this is for a C section, but for HSS, we would pretty much get rid of all, that, all of the web bending stuff, right? So we have a closed section, and all we have is torsion. And 
as you know, that in these types of in these types of closed sections are really stiff and strong in torsion. And so what you end up with is uh, wh what we were calling this is like a flexible jam, uh, and this is a, a quite a, a, a rigid jam. Um, and based on those, so if you had to guess, um, if you had to guess which uh, if which of these a, a C section or a or a HSS section, which one with the same door would produce more door deflection under the same load. So C would produce more deflection, and which one would produce the highest catenary forces? The two. So, so good one. You guys got it. All right. Uh, and so, as I mentioned, we can produce um, approximations to the real behavior quite accurately. And so, so, so then we started thinking, all right, the building owner wants the door that they want. The door manufacturer uh, needs to realize that their door performance depends on the jam detail. This is something that, we've, that we've been working on hard. So Lee has been working really hard on, with, that, with DASMA, telling them they're running their tests with very, with typically um, like masonry block or something, really rigid support. So they're saying, oh, our doors are deflecting six inches under, but they're actually deflecting 12 inches. If, if you connect them, if you all connect them to a C-section, they're def deflecting twice as much. And so uh, for, if I were a DASMA, the, the bells would be going off in my head, oh, well, I mean, I wonder, so, so we designed it for six inches of deflection, but at 12 inches, when it comes back, can it still roll up? I mean, that's, that's their requirement, is that they want it to roll up after it's been window jammed. Um, and the reason why, uh, if you can imagine, you get 12 inches of deflection, at some point you start getting plastic deformation in the curtain and so that it doesn't come back all the way. And that's when they have problems rolling things up. And we saw that in the test, too. When we, when we really pushed it to 80, 100, there was some residual curvature at the end. And it, uh, Bray, the, 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 the sweaty guy, uh, like, he, I, I remember him like, <laughs> oh, we're going to get this door up. Like, he was just like, just pretty much like rammed it up uh, to, to force it to roll up. So. It, um, anyway, so the door manufacturer is a key person here, and we're been, we've been working really hard with them. And then the metal building designer, that's you all. And, and what we're trying to teach you all is just how to calculate the, the demand forces on your jam and to make sure that you understand that the choices that you make for the jam design influence the, be the performance of the door. And so we set some design checks. The, the one is for de door deflection. And the one that we came up with uh, out of our research was the door span over 12. And, and I got feedback from the, at the Cleveland seminar, well, you know, that's, that's uh, quite a lot compared to the limits you have on deflections for the rest of the building. Um, but uh, this is what we came up with for uh, at least the ratio for helping to avoid the plastic deformation of the door. It's a serviceability limit. Um, it could be refined and improved. We could have, we could derive an equation if we wanted to to find out when, uh, how much pressure would cause plastic deformation. But all we did this is more empirically based based on this one. Then the jam capacity, um, making sure that that you can once you have the catenary forces, you can design for bending plus torsion. And so we're gonna you're gonna get the torsion um, lecture today, even though it is Friday. Uh, no one wants to talk about torsion. But, uh, where, all right, so wind, wind bar to jam connections, and then making sure that all of this stuff, because we saw in the post-hurricane surveys that Steve pulled out, tilting and bearing, tension and shear, all that stuff is super important. If the wind bar is not well connected, then your whole thing, um, you lose your whole door also. Um, so, the, so the design flow is, is, is stated here. Um, so you all, uh, a lot of times you don't know what door is coming into the building, um, what what door manufacturer, and and so the so, but but the wind lock gap and, and things like that, the 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 slats on the door, I mean maybe not so much, but definitely the wind lock gap and details are really important for understanding the performance. And so uh, we worked, uh, we had a, we conducted a survey with, survey with Dasma that I'll go over with you in a second. Um, so so the. The way you design it is you say like, all right, let's just say like we're going to design for a wind lock gap of half an inch. 
We don't know exactly what door is coming in, but that's the win-loss gap that we think we're, we're going to have detailed. Uh, then you go to the program, and you find the jam stiffness that satisfies the span over 12. So you can, you can, it's an iterative process. You play with the jam stiffness until you find a door deflection where you're limiting the, so you make sure that you're not, uh, you know, for a 10 foot door, you're not, you know, like, um, uh, you know, you, you make sure that you're not exceeding the, the limits that uh, are, are ex expected um, to ensure that the door def that will def uh, roll up properly at the end. And you size, so once you set the stiffness, then you know, once you set the stiffness, then you know the forces. And then you can calculate the forces in your jam, then you design your jam for strength, and, um, and then you check your jamming connection capacity. So that's the idea. So you, so you need to set, you need to, to assume or find out from the door manufacturer what the wind lock gap is, then you make sure that your jam is stiff enough to prevent a lot of deflection in the door, then you can calculate your forces based on the jam stiffness that you set, and then um, you go and you check for strength. So are there, uh, are there any questions so far? All right, so, um, well actually I changed this, so this is, uh, this is the old link, so just forget about that. But uh, So we've developed uh, two jam um, rolling uh, Sheet door jam spreadsheets, one for HSS sections right now and one for uh, C sections. Um, the it's pretty straightforward. Oh, actually, uh, right at the beginning is if you want to read a ton of stuff, we have a ton of published reports on this, and there's uh, also some other stuff that we use. Um, the, the basic idea is you set the width of your door, um, and then you uh, the you can either pull out some of the parameters for the door, uh, or you can, if you know what door you're using, you can input them directly. So this was a survey that was conducted with um, DASMA to determine the variability in their door dimensions um, across manufacturers. So what can you, there's something kind of funny here. Well, according to them, uh, there's no variability depending upon the from 8 to 20 feet. So you, you have minimum, maximum, um, wind lock spacing, moment of inertia. And so you, so you as a designer need to understand which ones of these are going to give you the most con uh, critical uh, design load for, for the, your jam. And also which ones of these influence the door deflection so you get a satisfactory L over 12. So you can, so we, for us, I think we, what we're doing is just taking the average of these, like splitting the difference, and if you don't know, um, uh, and then calculating the maximum deflection. So for a 10 foot uh, light door, we get maximum deflection of 10 inches, it's, and then we set the design pressure at 60 PSF or whatever. So limiting door deflection is the key point here. We're trying to limit the door deflection of 10. Uh, we provide commentary, so we have, we, it's an Excel spreadsheet, just has like step one, step two, step three, step four. I think you all are used to that kind of uh, design approach. And uh, then the step one, we have a then we have a step one commentary, step two commentary, and so you can go and read uh, more about uh, all the details. And so this should help you. The idea is that this should help you get and build your own design spreadsheet for um, like just like Jerry has done for DMCI. He has things like wind lock gap. We define them, wind lock spacing. The tributary width, so we're, you're, we're doing that one-way strip, and so you need to have a tributary width that you treat, uh, that you you uh, find, calculate. You try, then you calculate the jam stiffness. Then you go to CS, CVSA, plug in the properties, um, uh, and then you calculate jam stiffness. Um, then once you have the, you have to size the C-section jam to provide the required stiffness, and so we provide calculations for all of this stuff, like web bending and torsion for C-section. So we do all the, the, the crazy torsion for you. So if you go, I'll show you the equation maybe in a little bit here. Um, uh, and also we, you can input all the jam section properties. So these two are, for the C-section jam, the J and CW are very important. Um, and also the details of the wind locks. We put in all of these dimensions, like the wind lock 
connects at a certain distance away from the jam. Um, you have uh, like you also have the vert spacing, which is really important. So uh, if you if you have no verts here, for example, then when you're calculating the torsion, so you have a, a torsion fixity here, torsion fixity here, but in between, it's very flexible, right? And so uh, so the the jam stiffness is pretty low, even for torsion. Um, if you have this well braced, then in between here, um, you can still calculate the, the flexibility due to torsion, flexibility due to um, the web and, and the flange. So we provided all those equations for you for this case, um, or at least to give you some inspiration for calculating it yourself. Um, so we yeah, so we calculate all the, the we in the end we get KB. Remember that equation: one over KB plus one over KT inverse. I mean, it doesn't. It's not pretty. I'm telling you, it's not. It's not very pretty. But uh, we treat the torsion, and we end up with the the final uh, K jam. Then we need to check to make sure that we, we take that K jam, we plug it back into CBSA, and make sure that the deflections that we get of the door are less than our L over 12 limit. Um, I can't emphasize enough that reasonable jam boundary condition assumptions are super important here. Um, I'm going to give you the, let's see what time it is. Well, I can't give you the 25 minutes. I, I'll try to give you like the crash course and warping torsion. And, uh, but, but the warping torsion restraint here is, uh, is very, very important here in, in understanding like where your twist fixed, where your warping fixed, and how to treat that in the, in the torsion calculation. So for us, in, in the spreadsheets that we've just given you, we've assumed that this is twist fixed here and twist fixed here, and it's also warping fixed. So warping is out of plane deformation due to twist in a, in a non-circular section. And so warping fixed in this case means that we're just saying it's warping continuous, meaning we have a bunch of material back this way, a bunch of material back this way that prevents warping um, deformation. And so we have twist fixed, warping fixed here, twist fixed, warping free here, and that's how we calculate the jam stiffness. So if you want to be more conservative, you can you can say this is warping free here and this is warping free here. If you want to try to consider the the skirt as a spring, a rotational spring, then you can put in a rotational spring here and use your structural analysis program um, to, to actually determine the stiffness. So there you have a lot of power depending upon exactly how uh, detailed you want, but it is it is important because you can get much different answers if if you're not treating it in a special manner. All right, so let's. Uh, Quickly go over. Um, so you all have looked at AIC, AISC Design Guide Nine. You have it memorized. Oh, it's got some really beautiful figures in there, right? Lots of like curvy things added in. Uh, for me, what I just want you to know is when you're using it. So this is what we're assuming. We have a uniformly distributed torque. So, so between here and here, we have fixed, a twist fixed, warping fixed, and we have a uniformly distributed torque provided by the wind locks. Got that? That's what this is right here. So, um, but the trick is knowing which one of these to pick in AIC Design Guide 9. So for a moment, this is pretty easy, right? You know this inverse board, which is twist fixed. For torsion, what the heck does this mean? So this means that this is actually twist fixed. So it can't twist at the ends, but it can warp at the ends. So it's like, uh, I, I always wish I had something to, I don't know, I'll just make something here. So uh, twist fixed, so the one on the left is like I'm holding it, I'm holding it like around here like this, but when I twist it, like it can still, it can still move in this direction. Or sorry, actually, I'm not twisting. It's twist fix here, twist fix here. But if I twisted something in the middle, I need another hand. Yeah, the corners of the C are allowed to move, but but there's no twist at the ends. That's what the left is. The right is this. We 
got that. We got that right there. That's what I said. We got it uh, because you have warping. Yeah, you, in between the jerks, I think you have this because 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 at the, at the end up here, you're warping free probably unless you have something bearing up, up against there. But in here, uh, you're warping fixed because you have all this stuff on either side of it to prevent the warping that can happen. So this is where, where we went with our spreadsheet. If you want to go somewhere else, that's you can you can do it. Uh, there's other equations in there, um, and so this is the difference. Um, so theta is the war so you see there's zero warping there's zero twist at each end. It just changes the the the, the twist along the number becomes um, uh, nonlinear or more nonlinear. This is the equation. This is what we saved you from. So, uh, so you can calculate now. You can calculate the twist along here. So because of that, you can calculate the jam coefficients on the bottom of here. Uh, so that's fine. That's fine. So let's just do something here. Let's actually try to calculate something. It's more fun. And we have 20 minutes, no problem. All right. So um, we'll just use the. So now, uh, for those of you who are following al following along, um, this is the spreadsheet. This is step one. Uh, so we, we talked about, so, so you all decided you wanted a C-section jam, but you still want to do the 30-foot door just to see what happens, just explode this thing. Or what do, you, what, what, do you, what do you feel like? You want to be reasonable or you want to be like wild people today? Huh? But, but that's but people are saying this. You want to do the tube or you want to do the C-section? All right. At the C, we have warping torsion. With the tube, we only have St. Bernard torsion. So 16 foot? All right. Fine. 16. Let's split the difference. All right. Um, so we're, we're assuming a wind lock gap of 0.7, uh, uh, 3 quarters of an inch. Wind lock spacing 8 inches. All that's set. We'll go to 60 PSF. Now, um, now we need to go to CBSA and calculate all of these. Um, uh, we need to calculate the required uh, jam stiffness. So um, I have CBSA running here. So 16, whoops, 16 times 12. That's 192, good job. The wind lock spacing is 0.75 inches. He said the wind lock spacing, uh, wind lock spacing is 8 inches. Um, we had the moment of inertia. Where did we select in the moment of inertia? That was of the of the slats was 0 0.0107. Zero this is a factor because um, that moment of inertia actually decreases because the door flattens as you put the pressure on it. So we just put in 0.25. You can put in whatever you want. Um, uh, so now we want to go to 60. Um, let's just do it in increments of 10 because this thing, oh wait, um, we can do 10 here. Then let's do ten increments of ten, just because this thing might take a while to run. Okay, Jeremy, I, I left it at five hundred because I think that might work. <laughs> See, Jerry, right? You've been running it a while, right? Yes. Although this thing doesn't really work too well, and my dry cleaner's gone. Maybe you can save it, maybe you can't. Please, Lord. <laughs> oh, there we go, it worked. How about that? So you can go in, um, and so you can get you can get the deflection of the of the door. The door deflects eighteen inches. Uh, or which we which was violated, right? By 
what is um, 16, so we violated it. All right, so we need to make the jam a little bit stiffer. So how about if we do, um, well, let's just, let's just make it 700. How about that? All right, do you want to run it again? I feel like I don't have time, so. Anyway, you see the process, like, so it's deflecting 18 inches. You want less than 16, so you need to increase K jam. You got it? All right, so let's just use like 700 or 800 or something. Oh, actually, I do have to run it again because I need to get the forces. So let's just run it. Let's try it. I think we're, 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 we're good. Oh, he doesn't, oh, the, the, this, this customer doesn't care? All right. Well, then that's fine with me. All right, well, if, is it still running? If, it's still, if we don't care, then we can just write this down. So if you can write down these two numbers, 764, 322. Well, actually, I can get it now. Here, let's write down these numbers. Uh, let's write down 836 and 322. So there's 836 pounds on each wind lock. So what C-section do we want to use here? Um, so we'll put this. So let's just use this C-section. I did this last time. I don't know why. This is a crazy dimension. So this is from four to seven is, um, so this is a uh, nine inches, and this is seven to nine is, oh, this is five inches. All right, so we got some crazy C-section here, but let's, let's just use it. Um, so you can type in, um, So you can get J from here, you can get the section properties. So the J for that section is uh, 0 0.007, four inches right there. CW is 125. We have, let's say we have um, uh, two wind lock details, G0, US, GW, that's fine. So we, well, let's let's say what what is our girt spacing on our um, on our jam? What do you what do you want it to be? Like up up the jam. Forty eight inches. Okay. And uh, so if you calculate, so let's see now. What we end up with is uh, according to this, we have a jam stiffness of. 814 pound inches per wind lock, so that's pretty good. So what we said we needed was um, 700, right? So so we're actually uh, we're actually okay. You all s see what's going on? So we just type this in. You calculate KB. Remember I showed you that, and KT. So what's the difference between what's which one is controlling? Look at KB. Look at KT. Web bending is controlling for this C-section. It's pretty obvious because it's a uh, nine inch step. All right, cool. So at least um, we know that we've satisfied this, that we're at least over the 700 and now we can go to step four. So step four is um, we need to put in 
So what we want to do now is we want to calculate the, uh, the stresses in the cross-section, and we'll check it for um, bending. So we have bending about the strong axis, bending about the weak axis, and we have warping st stresses due to corrosion. Fit to fix these, but we didn't fix them. So, so the section modulus. Um, so we need to calculate the section modulus, which is nine. Oh, we just divide by four point five, right? For SX. So it's this. It's uh, this. Twenty. Okay, so it's twenty nine divided by four point five. is equal to <coughs> this divided by, and the neutral axis is, so this distance from here to here is 1.66, so let's put, actually there should be two section moduli, right, because it's uh, one to the compression side, one to the Whatever, I think you get the idea. It's 1.66 divided by 1.6. Um, crunch thickness. We have the demand. So did I update the demand anywhere? I saw I had to put those numbers in somewhere here. Oh, here, I have to put the numbers in. So what were FX and FY? 836. 836. 322. So these are the forces that are applied on the jam. So now we have our demand moments. So we have a moment acting in this direction, we have a moment acting in this direction, and we have torsion. So now this is where uh, you have to uh, understand how to calculate warping corrosion. So I'll show you this equation. This is in design guide nine. Warping stresses are a function of the second derivative of, of, of the, the twist multiplied by a warping function. So for hot rolled members, you calculate it as this. So it pretty much tells you the magnitude of the warping stresses around your cross section. So the highest warping stress is here and here and here and here uh, multiplied by E. So this is all we're doing. Um, And this is a plot, so this is essentially a plot of the warping stresses for a hot rolled steel section, or actually for our section as well. So where you have high warping stresses at the end of the member, you have high warping stresses at the middle, and then you have high warping stresses at the end again. Does that make sense to you all? So what would happen if we had warping free here and warping free here? If we had the pin condition. The warping stresses go to zero here at the end. If you don't restrain, if you, I mean, if it's unrestrained, then you can't develop warping stresses. So that's what's going on here. And so this is the assumption that we've made. And so we can calculate the second derivative of, of theta um, with the sheet. Um, one last thing that we need is that warping function. And the cool thing about COFSM is that it'll actually give it to you. So you see this right here. You want the warping plot. So this warping plot uh, gives you that function, and so you can go, to, you can you can spit out that warping for any cross section. You can spit it out. Uh, let's say like warping. gives you those numbers that you need so to calculate the stresses at each corner. So it's negative 19 at this corner, and it goes to uh, plus 19. And so you can plug in those, these numbers 
around um, for, for each location that you're interested in. We have uh, right here. So I have them plugged in. This is for I think it's for the sink. Maybe a slightly different cross section, but it walks you through it. So you, but so at each node. Let's see here. This is. Uh, can you all see that? Okay. So this is like we're calculating the stresses here, 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 and here. that by putting in the, that, that warping function at each one of the nodes here. And then uh, based on our, our strong axis moment, our weak axis moment, and um, the warping torsion, we have all of the, the stresses um, documented here. And so in the end, what we have is a total stress at node one is tension I guess actually what we can look here is that the, some of the maximum stresses are exceeding the yield stress. So in this case, this jam uh, does not work for strength. So in this case, we're the jam, the, the, the door is pulling like this. So I'll try to get, so the jam is pulling like this, so we're getting compression up here. We're getting a tension in this direction, and then um, based on the warping torsion, we get compression, tension, compression, tension. Certainly argue that. I mean, the, the I mean, it's probably there for you, of course. I mean, the the this 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 method of combining stresses when you have bending and torsion has been around for a long time. It's just because we don't have any other methods. Uh, so it is we do consider it like the yield limit as the failure, but for sure it it, it, it exists beyond that. Test requires it. Well, I kind of blew through that example, but are there any questions? We have a few minutes here. Um, if you want to, yes. Make sure that yeah you know, to make yeah make sure that and you can look up the sure so like the, the stores have a detail that they have the how they calculate the stress so they may not they they may not be just because it's a they have no specific numbers for it but it's good to questions about, I mean, do you think really the intent of this, uh, we got to the point where we can produce some rough tools, but this is really intended to just inspire you all um, to do your own calculations. All right. Well, thank you very much.